and I rise to speak on the um, Education and Training Reform Amendment. And um, we do support the bill um, and make note of the fact that there's some very minor changes. Before I begin, I... Um, I want to take the time to say thank you to the principals and teachers of South West Coast, the many, many schools who spent the greater period of this year um, adapting and pivoting and um, in being inventive and um, creative to uh, bring the education standards that they so, um, so highly um, aspire to and, and maintain into the homes and out of the classroom with, uh, as a result of the pandemic and the lockdowns. I also want to um, acknowledge the parents and teach uh, children who um, have done an extraordinary job under extraordinary circumstances. But I also am amazed that we are in the House today speaking on a bill that um, basically does very little. It um, is a very minor um, change to the um, to the act that um, basically um, is a really short uh, bill that um, the second reading speech is actually longer than the changes and basically it's it's legislation to provide certainty to the VCAA um, so that they can employ um, examiners for VCA exams and other exams so what uh, surprises me is that it actually says that this will not result in any change to current practices. So here we are in the parliament in the middle of a pandemic um, doing a very minor change to a bill that it already states will make very little different. And um, my question is why could this not have been done earlier or um, if it's not gonna make any difference, given we've got um, children who are about to go into VC exams uh, who have to wear masks in those um, exams, I would have thought we should be here debating in the parliament how we can, together, as an opposition and as a um, and as the government, together we can actually um, be the leaders that this state requires of us instead of playing politics, which the state continually, sorry, the gov state government continually states that uh, they are not playing politics. Well, I don't know how many times I asked for briefings um, so I could assist the community, understand the challenges and uh, was ignored. And I'm, I'm not confident that, um, you know, the information that the, the people are getting makes sense and they want some sort of uh, cooperation and we're not, we certainly haven't been seeing that. Certainly the other side are doing a wonderful job of talking about what a fantastic uh, effort they've made and how they want to be uh, collegiate and uh, it's just ridiculously not true. I heard today the leader of the um, government business um, talking about the fact that, you know, they've done an extraordinary job. There is a virus. I've never denied that. I don't think anyone on my side ever would. The virus is um, a health a crisis and we've needed to put changes in place. What we didn't need was the government to um, tweak their own uh, performance every time they came away from, tweak, tweak, tweak their, uh, the rules when Daniel Andrews came away from the um, National Cabinet to um, make it slightly different and actually end up with a really poor result. We're in this situation today where the kids could not be in school in Victoria very, very differently to the other states simply because the government stuffed up hotel quarantine. There was an offer of the Australian Defence Force made by the federal government, which was refused by the state government. And we should never forget this. And that is why the, the um, virus escaped hotel quarantine and seeded the virus right throughout um, Victoria, mainly in Melbourne, but affected every Victorian, every child at school, every parent who needed to um, try and adapt their household to be able to educate their children. And I hear the government saying, you know, it's, it's all so bad because, um, you know, we, we've got to look to Europe and, you know, they've done a wonderful job. Well, no, look to New South Wales and Queensland and Tasmania. In Australia, Victoria is the standout, pathetic, poor result that we're seeing. And we can't ignore that. We can't ignore the truth. 800 people have died. 800 families have lost a loved one. And we can't, if that, if that was a train accident, that had happened with the government's um, train system, there would be absolute outrage. So, you know, the family in Portland who lost their father, whose children 
our young primary school children, you know, they're the ones who need answers. Because hotel quarantine in Victoria is the reason we have the outbreak we have today. And the fact that we've got no cases today and no cases yesterday, and regional Victoria has done an extraordinarily good job of managing the pandemic, but have been compromised by this severe lockdown, when it's actually the government again through contact tracing that has failed. Contact... Point of order, sorry. The uh, member for Tarnit. Acting Speaker. Uh, Acting Speaker, just a point of order. Could The member is now straying far and away from the bill. If you could bring the member back to the, uh, the bill that we're discussing. It has been a wide-ranging debate so far, but I would bring the member back to the bill. On the point of order? OK. So I will come back to the bill, because there's so much I can say about the education that's been compromised. And this is what this bill's about. It's about changing uh, the education element and, and, this, and the mass, and the, exam, uh, the employment of examiners. So let's talk about the exams for a minute then. The VCE exams, where in the regions, the kids in regional Victoria were compromised by this government who continually says that the data and the evidence is what's, what's actually led the medical advice. Well, I could go on forever, but I will stray off the bill again if, if I, I go down that line too far. But I will go down the line from saying that regional Victorian children in VCE were disadvantaged because the minister made a decision that uh, he didn't want um, to disadvantage the, the, the metropolitan kids. Well, the regional kids are already disadvantaged, and that's a proven fact by the fact that we adjust, the Education Department adjusts the ATAR score in recognition of the disadvantage of regional kids. So the, dis, the kids in VCE couldn't go back to school um, when, when they were able to, based on a health, the health advice, they had to stay at home so that we didn't have an uneven playing field. Well, we have an uneven playing field, and even when the kids are going my, in my electorate, they'll often go to um, uh, universities in um, South Australia and New South Wales. A lot of kids do veterinary science. Um, they go up to Wagga Wagga. They go to Armidale. And so they are at a disadvantage because they've got to uh, sit some exams in a couple of weeks, and they've been out, out of school a lot longer than they're their uh, interstate counterparts. But not only that, they're really anxious. You know, I've been speaking to um, VCE kids over the last few days, actually, and they are really stressed. And it's already a stressful time. But you put them in a mask for three hours during the exam, and why? You know, we've got the space in regional Victoria. We've got the space even in Melbourne, where you've got big centres where they could put um, dis social distancing between the kids. So here we are talking about making sure the employment contract is, is OK between the Victorian um, VCAA or between, and the teachers, when what we should be talking about is these kids have suffered enough. What can you do, government, to actually make the exam process somewhat more appropriate for them than continuing to put them under enormous pressure? So there's so much I, I, could, I think we should be here talking about. But I think the government has failed, and I think they should acknowledge that failure, apologise to the students, apologise to the families, acknowledge the good work the teachers have done. I mean, my kids hardly had internet access, a dongle, Sending out dongles, they didn't even send out enough, but we didn't even, who'd heard of a dongle for the last 10 years? So, you know, music teachers are talking to me at the moment, principals are talking to me at the moment, and these inconsistency in rules when contact tracing is the problem in Victoria, in the regions, we've been doing it very well. The government in Melbourne have not been able to do that. That's evident, and Victorians have suffered because the government has failed. I mean, look at what these young kids have put up with as well in the country with not being able to do their licence testing online. TAFE's open now. TAFE does testing for Vic Roads for uh, um, uh, forklift driving, um, all sorts of heavy vehicle uh, programs so they get licences. Why can't they get the ELS test down, done down at TAFE? TAFE's open. So, you know, this pivoting of the government is very, very poor compared with what teachers and businesses and families have had to do. So. Just really all I wanted to talk about was how pathetic it is that we're sitting here talking about this bill when we've got a pandemic on and where our families need us to work together, not have your palaver and rhetoric thrown at them when you've failed and you should acknowledge it. <laughs>